now that we've built our first email template, let's go ahead and create a list email. Again, the difference between an email template and a list email, we can create an email template to be used for list emails, autoresponders, one-to-one -one emails, and engagement studio emails. And list emails are just that, an email we're going to send to a list. So let's go over to marketing, emails, and let's select new list email. This is going to look a lot like when we're building an email template. So this is gonna be for a monthly newsletter. So I have my August monthly newsletter. And I'm gonna choose campaign just of emails. And then I do wanna keep it HTML and text, not just text only. And I'm not gonna enable A-B testing just yet. We will be getting into that in just a second. So let's go ahead and hit save. So we did create a template not too long ago, and you can see here's our demo monthly newsletter. So we wanna bring this in, because we wanna use this template to put in our new content and to put in our pictures. What's great about this is we can build templates and they can be used over and over again, and it doesn't change the initial copy on our template. It's going to bring it into an email, like we can see here, we can make changes here and it doesn't affect our base template. So it's really great. So if you have a format for an email that you send monthly, send weekly, go ahead and create an email template that you can use over and over again. So a lot of the same items apply when we're building a list email. We can get full use of our WYSIWYG area. Again, each block can have its own style. We can also pull in some HTML. We can preview our email. We have the text version that we already brought in. As we're making edits here, don't forget, and part I won't let you forget, but don't forget to update your text email here because as we start to change it with new content, you can see that this highlights right here. It means, hey, don't forget that we need to update the content in the text area again. So once you're all done um, editing and everything's approved, then I recommend going ahead and taking the HTML, putting it into our little converter, grab the text, and then placing it over here. That way you're not going back and forth. So the testing is going to be the same as well. We'll be able to send test list emails to individual emails and also do our rendering. The only thing that changes is our sending tab. So if we check out our sending tab, it's gonna look a bit different. We can now add what list do we wanna send this email to? So this is my monthly newsletter. So I wanna grab my monthly newsletter list. And we also have the option of having a suppression list. Maybe for my monthly newsletter, I don't want anyone who's not a current customer to receive this email. Or maybe I don't want current customers to receive this email. So I can just take my customers list and use it as a suppression saying, even if they might be in our newsletter, if they're also in the customers, they're not going to get this email. We also have the ability to change our sender. This brought in the sender of our template, but we can change it if we wanted to. We could also change the subject line as well. Another great thing with list emails is we're able to add completion actions on this email. So why would you add a completion action to this email? Let's just say if a prospect clicks a particular URL, we might want to alert and I don't have any URLs in this email, but we might wanna alert their specific um, owner, or maybe we want to update them in one of our campaigns that we have with uh, responded. So they clicked on a specific link, they responded to that campaign. So there's a lot of use cases for adding in completion actions. Some just to keep in the back of your head uh, for a prospect who opens this email, we could add them to an open list. That way, if we ever want to resend out an email, we can use the open list as our suppression list. So that way, we can send the email out again to all prospects who didn't open the email because it's going to suppress everyone who did open the email. Um, for our prospects who clicks a specific link, we can add them to a Salesforce campaign. We can let them know, uh, we can let their specific rep know that they um, clicked on a link. We can also, we can also assign from a click. Although I don't recommend assigning from a click, um, you know, we can add them to a list that they've been active prospects. We can tag them. So a lot of things that you can do, really depending on your use case. 
So let's say we set up our, our completion actions and we're ready for this email to go out. We have two options here. We have the schedule send and we have the send now. Because I'm on a test system, I'm not able to send emails out. Um, however, uh, if we hit the schedule button, we would see a little calendar that pops up and we can schedule our email out. So if I don't want this newsletter to go out until next week, I can schedule it out for next week at 9 a.m. for instance to send out. Or if we're late and we really need this email to get sent out, we can hit send now and it will start sending. So that's really the basics of a list email. The one thing I do want to show you before we move on, if we go back to the building tab, we do have the use to make this an A-B testing email. So what is an A-B testing email? Uh, to A-B test in Pardot, we can test off two things. We can test off opens. So we are going to want to change our subject line. Maybe we want two different subject lines, so whichever one has the most opens, we're going to use that. Or maybe it's going to be off of clicks, so that's going to be internally, the content changes. Maybe we'll have two different calls to actions. So to enable A-B testing, let's go to our basic info and let's enable A-B test. So what it's going to do is going to copy our A version to a B version so we can make edits. So let's go ahead and hit save. And we now have two different versions. So we have our A version and we have our B version. Depending on how you're going to test your emails, whether it's through open or clicks, we'll want to change the testing scenarios within our emails. For instance, I'm going to test off opens. I want to see which subject line really performs better. Is it so is it the personalization that helps our email out? Or maybe let's just do something that on our B test that doesn't have the personalization. And we're just going to put check out what's new this month. So our two different versions, we have our A that has the personalization and we have our B that does not have the personalization. On our sending tab, We'll notice that we have, if we scroll down, we now have two different subject lines that we can change here. And then we have the configuration of how we want to test our A-B testing. You can choose how long you want the test to run. So whether it's up to one day, or we can even do an hour. We want to do an hour. If you're going to A-B test, give yourself a couple days. So we could do three days. We want to test for three days before we send out the winning email. So what criteria do you want to use to determine the winner? For me, and because I changed my subject line, I'm going to use opens. If you're changing your call to action or your content within the email, you're going to want to do clicks. But we can either, but we can test only from these two variations, opens or clicks. I'm going to do open. And then it asks you, what percentage of your audience do you want to use for testing? So right now, I just have 24 mailable prospects, and if I do 25%, it's going to split three emails to A and three emails to B, a total of six prospects altogether. Once it determines the winner, whether it's email A or email B, it's going to send the winner to the additional 18 prospects. You can change it to 10%, you can change it all the way down to 10% and as high as 50%. I really recommend anywhere between the 10 to 15% realm. And again, you can do your completion actions. We can't change completion actions based off email A and email B. It's going to be the same for all, just as an FYI. So if I wanted to test here, I could send this out now, and then in three days, it's gonna see, okay, out of these two emails that we sent, version A is a winner because it had more opens than version B, so it's gonna send out version A to the rest of the audience here. So let's just say that we've enabled A-B testing, and um, at the last minute, they're, at the last minute, you're told, you know what, we don't want to do A-B testing for this particular email. What do you do now? Are we going to go back and create the same email again? No. All we have to do is go back to the basic info, unselect A-B testing, and it's going to say, well, what version do you want to keep? I'm going to keep version A because it does have my personalization within here, and I'm going to hit save. 
So it will refresh and now we just have one version and that's my version A. If we go back to the building area, we'll see here that here's version A. We can make our changes and get it set up to sending. So that's how we set up list emails. So again, we based it off of an email template that we created beforehand. We made our changes within the list email here. It did not change anything within our email template. And then we can do our A-B testing with our list emails and we can get them scheduled or we can send out now. In our next section, we're gonna be going over the email preference center and then we'll start getting into some of the fun stuff with Engagement Studio.